Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com and this is a new video. I've done videos on hooks before, um, but it's a new one. This is purely just kind of getting into how to use React with functional components and hooks um, with some very basic examples. So I want to set up a new React project. I'm going to use my little script that I have to create new React projects pretty quickly just because I like to show off my scripts. If I remember right, I think I have to do React because I have one for TypeScript and one for just JavaScript. So things like React, JS, and this is just, we'll call this just hooks. React JS hooks. Let's see if that works. Yep, there we go. So it's basically cloning my. I have a template. So if you go to my GitHub, you'll find a React parcel template for TypeScript and a React parcel template for just normal React. And what this does, it clones it. It clones it into a folder uh, of the na of the name that I chose. So I'm cloning it to a folder called hooks. It clones the file. Um, and then does the npm install, uh, which right now it needs me to do this because it also removes the git folder. So, and then makes a new git repository, and then should be installing uh, npm installing everything in just a moment. And there it goes. And there you go. So I don't have to do all that stuff. Nice. Okay. So I have all my projects all nice and queued up. <coughs> okay. Yay for bash scripting. Okay, and then here we go. Let me just take a quick look. So if you haven't used my template before, it's pretty much like any other React template you've probably used before. Everything starts in the index.html. The index.html has a div that has some sort of ID. In this case, the ID is app. And then there's an app component that then injects and that is injected into that app div. Okay, and then that's that. Okay, there's a CSS file I already have, and then some other components, but I'm going to ignore all that for the moment. So I'm going to just disconnect all those. This is not important for this particular lesson. And then I have two scripts in the script file. which include dev and build. So dev, just when you want to run the dev server, build when you want to build out your final project. Okie dokie. And just waiting for this to finish. Okie dokie. So that has finished installing. Good times. So now here's the deal. We're going to start up our dev server. So npm run dev. Okie dokie. And close this. I don't really need this open right now. And this will run the dev server, which will run in the window. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create two components, not just the. And I'm going to keep them all in the same file. Um, we're going to have a class component. So essentially what we're going to have here is I'm going to create two components. I'll just leave that like that right now. First, we're going to create a class component, class classy, just to show you how class components typically work. Extends react.component. OK. And then we're going to have a function component, const funky extends oh no it doesn't extend anything it's a function and that equals props okay and essentially these two components are going to be the same exact thing except one is using funct a function component the other one's using a class component my goal is to show you the difference Okay, first we'll just render hello world with both of them. So for a class component, we would then have to create this render function. Okay, and we would, oh, there it goes. It's opening. Okay, and really, I, I think it, yeah, we'll come back to it. Okay, classy. Mm. 
and funky. Save. Okay, and we'll come back to it once we actually get them to a point where something should be visible. But we'd have this render function, and then this render function would return JSX. So again, I'm assuming you know what JSX is if you're watching this video. <coughs> I'm not going to really be getting into the ins and outs of JSX. Please watch my other React videos if that's what you need. Okay, and we're just going to make it an H1 right now. So I'm not going to bother with the parentheses. Hello world. We're just showing you how to get the basic version of the component. So that's a class component that puts out hello world. Now, in the function component, I can just implicitly return that. So I don't even need the curly brackets right now. I can just do h1. Because whatever this function returns is supposed to be JSX. And the JSX that this function returns is what gets rendered. So already, we kind of see the benefits of a functional component. I can do a lot more with a lot less text. So you see, this is I got that all in one line. Well, this took that. That was like the least I could do. OK. So if I save that, it's going to rebuild. So you see it's rebuilding. Now I should have two hello worlds there. And I have two hello worlds there. Second thing we'll show you is props. So let's say I want to pass in the text. So we'll call this uh, words. We'll call the prop words. Words equals goodbye world. OK. So this and again, I'm assuming you know how props work. I'm assuming you have some basic knowledge of React. So I'm going to pass them both this prop. Goodbye, world. Now, why is it being there? OK. Um, cool. So now if I wanted to use a prop in a class component, I'd have to type this. This dot props dot words now in the function component it would just be props dot words it's not a class so I don't have to worry about the this component or the this keyword that's nice there we go so now if I save this it gets rebuilt and I should have goodbye world twice there you go <coughs> so props pretty much work the same way. The only difference is I don't have to use this in a function component. OK, so next let's talk about state. Now, here's where the differences start to become much more different. The functionality is essentially the same. But how do you do it is the difference. So again, what's the point of state? State is to have variables that, when they change, trigger a re-rendering of the component. So the component rebuilds itself because the data changed. So any data that has to do with how your component looks like on the screen that changes what the user sees should be in state. So that way those visual components rebuild themselves when the state changes. OK, so in this one, if you want to add state, we have to add a constructor. So we have to create a constructor. And do, 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 do. I think we actually if I remember I had to put in props there. And I, I don't think it's as necessary in modern day. I think they fixed a lot of that in the classes, but they st I still think you still can do this. Props. I guess again, what happens is that props gets passed into the constructor, and you need to pass it into the React.component constructor. So that way, props gets built um, and is available the way it's supposed to be available. And then you actually have to define the state. This dot saying this is the only time where you can actually define it using an equal sign. To get the benefit of state, you have to use a set state function. So this dot state, and then you put all your data in one object. So one difference is in a class, you only have one state, and everything has to be put in that state. So in this case, we'll say um, words. We'll have more words, and this time it'll be hello world. OK, and then we'll have num, which will be 1. OK, cool. So now let's 
to make it more complicated JSX. So I need to wrap this in parentheses now. And I'm going to wrap this in what's called a fragment because, again, you have the whole issue with JSX. With top, you only can have one top level tag. So a fragment makes it where you don't have to worry about that because everything is wrapped in that invisible fragment tag. So now we're going to have an H1 that has this dot state dot words. Okay, so you can see this. It's going to be hello world again. And then we're going to have an H2 that has this dot state dot num. And we will. Why don't we do this? Just like things to look nicer. Save. And there we go. That looks better. So that's how you would do state in a class component. Okay, so you have to create a constructor and you have to create the state. For the longest time, there was no such thing as state and function components. So if you wanted to use function components, you just couldn't use state. And then someone was smart enough to figure out, it's like, why don't we use like closures? I'm not going to get into what closures are. It doesn't really matter for being able to use this. But they were able to add this kind of functionality to the function component. So now we do want the curly brackets so we can actually do more stuff in this function. So I will do that. Which means we do need to now explicitly return this JSX. So we're going to return the JSX. And that means this doesn't, and I'm going to be adding some more details in here. So I do need to add our parentheses. So let me just, and I'm going to put in the fragment in there while I'm at it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna have to do a, B, a little bit of this. Okay, now to use state in a function component, you have to use this function called use state. So the cool thing, a nice thing about functional component state is you don't have to put everything in one object. So in a class component, you only get one state, this dot state, and everything's gotta be put in there because that's the only one you get. While in the function component, state is separate than the component. So you can actually create multiple instances of state, which is really, really cool. So I can do this. So let's say we're gonna create a state for uh, words. So I can be const, const, and then what you do is you do array destructuring because the function returns an array. The first array being your state, which we'll call words. And then it gives you a function to update that piece of state. So we'll call that to set words. And then we just do react.useState. And we put in the initial value of that state, which will be hello world. Now I'm going to keep it exactly the same as the function above, as the class component above. So I need num. So I'll just make another piece of state num set num equals react.useState one okay so that that state's initially set to one and now i can do the same thing here i can go then use those properties so we'll do an h1 that has that uses state but again know this because it's not a class so it's just state dot words and then i did we do another h1 or an h2 h2 an h2 that uses num so state uh, oh no it's not state that num it's just words that's another nice thing you know the, there's not so much typing the variables just has a name because we called it words and we called it num cool and there you go you see hello world one num Hello, goodbye, hello world, hello world one. So they, they look exactly the same, just built in two different syntaxes. See this one? So this is our class component, which you see slightly looks a little bit more complicated than our function component, but it's the same thing. Just how you set your state, how you set all that is just slightly different. It's all personal preference. Okay, now the next thing to talk about is updating your state okay so again you would use the set state function 
So we're gonna do is we're gonna create a button that's gonna just add one to num. Okay, so we're just gonna create a button. We'll call we'll create a function called handle count. So this is a class we have to kind of create it as a method, which means we're using this syntax. So handle count, all it does is this dot set state. Okay, this dot set state equals um, we have to pass in a new object, and that new object now has a property of num that equals this dot state dot num incremented. So that way, every time this function runs, it just adds one to num. And the cool thing about class components, since it knows that you have to put everything in only one object, like you only get one state, it does do an effort to meld it. So I don't have to always be putting in like a a spread. Um, a, 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 a spread operator in order to like, hey, don't forget the rest of the object. It'll reconcile it for you, which is nice. So it won't do that in a function component. So if you try to put everything in one state in the function component, you have to like rebuild that whole thing every single time. But you don't have to. You can just make separate pieces of state. So this dot set state num this dot state good. Now there's a function. Now we just need to create a button that uses that function. So we'll just create a button. And this button will have a on click function. That is this dot handle count. Okay, so every time it gets clicked, it'll just use that button. And we make that button say something. Count. Okay, so that's how you would do the fun that's how you would do um, the event. Um, And then now that I think about it, we need to bind this function because there's this whole issue. That's another really annoying thing about state components that you have to worry about binding um, these things. So if I remember right, where do I want to do that? I want to do that. I could do it right. Easiest thing to do would be just do it over here. So it'd be like this dot handle count equals this dot handle count dot bind this. Okay, and so just to explain what that means is that this is just this weird way that this behaves in JavaScript. So what this does is just make sure that this refers to the class because when you click on the button, JavaScript is gonna think that you mean the this is the button. So when I do this dot set state, it's gonna try to grab state from the button. The button doesn't have state. The comp this class has state. So that's an annoying, a really annoying, that's probably my favorite reason to do function components. So I don't have to do that because I hate that. But um, okay. Well, let's just test that out first. So let's go back over here. Okay. Now, if I click the button, uh, let's see here. Control Shift I. I didn't do what I think it should do. So that means I made some mistake somewhere. So I maybe have an error somewhere around here. No. So this would. Do this dot handle count, and then this dot handle count would do this dot set state, which the new state would then be <coughs> value of num. Let me check my React Dev tools. So let's go over here to the components. Let's go to the classy. And let's see here. State one. State isn't changing. Okay, which means by let's do console.log invoked just to see if this function is even being invoked in the first place. I have a feeling it isn't. Button dot on click. This dot handle count. Yeah, that should be fine. I mean, I, I there's one thing I know that I could, I could adjust it with, but let's see if we can avoid that. Okay, let's click. Let's go back to the console, click. Yeah, it wasn't invoked, so that means that this dot set state function isn't working. Mm -mm -mm. And up this dot set state. Now that should definitely exist. 
this on type classy. Constructor, we invoke the super constructor. This dot state. And probably does not exist on type classy. Why is that? Here's what I will do to make this easier. I'm going to do const num equals this dot state dot num plus plus. And that way I can just do this. To re-render, so let's click this. It's being invoked, but the state is not being updated. Interesting. Okay. This is another reason why I hate class components. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Const num was console log num. Make sure that num is what I think it is. back to that. Okay, now it's working. So here are the changes that I made. I'm not quite sure which change fixed it, but what I did is I, instead I binded it over here. So instead of binding it in my constructor, I binded it over here. Okay, so it's bound here. And then the only other major change is that I, ch instead of using increment, I changed this to this dot state dot num plus one. Um, but yeah, for some reason now it works. Okay, so let's refresh. And you can see what happens is that when I hit the count button, it sets the state to two, which then automatically updates the visual. Okay, so I don't actually have to sit there and put in the logic, we're updating the DOM, which is nice. So now let's do the same thing in a functional component. So I just have to create the same function. So I can just create the function using a normal function, you know, arrow function. So const handle count equals um, this. And all this does is set num to num plus one. And there we go, there's our method. And then I just create the same button. So button and then the button has to have an on click. And that's going to equal, in this case, we don't have to do with this, it's just handle count. And we don't need to do a bind, it's just handle count. And then click me. And there you go, you have a button that'll update state. So when this button is clicked, it'll run this function. It just adds one to the current, it just updates the num state to num plus one. Okay, and now what if I click on this? It just updates. Nice. Okay. Very good. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about how to do is lifecycle functions. Because generally when you want to do an API call um, for like data that you initially need to load up your component, you want to do it in a lifecycle method. Because if you just did it in the body of the component, it would run the API call, update your state, and then after updating your state, it would then re-render and just end up in this infinite loop where it's just doing that API call over and over again. So how you do that in class versus functional components is quite different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a get to JSON placeholder. So that way we can have a URL to do a fake API call to. 
Okay, so we'll let that load. We just start setting it up here. Now in a class component, the way you would do something once when the component initially loads is you would use lifecycle functions. There's generally three main ones. Um, component will mount. Um, actually, I'm gonna list it right over here. So it's like component will mount, component should update. Um, but let me just make sure I get the right names because there's a whole bunch of legacy ones too. So here we go. So it's component did mount, component will unmount means the component's being removed, and that those will trigger things. So we want to use component did mount is the name of the function. And we do that. Let's just make sure, yep, component did mount. And then we would do our API call there. Okay. Now, if you want to use async await, which is generally what I prefer, then you make a separate function to call in there. So I'll just do const, you know, get info. Oh, wait, can't do this as a class component. So I won't worry about that right now. Um, essentially, what I have to do would be like, this um, I think I would just do async get info yeah that should work I usually do arrow functions for everything so I always forget where to put the async for named functions um, let's see here no that's not what I'm looking for here Okay, I just want the URL. I'll type out the fetch myself. Okay, so we get the URL from JSON placeholder just for sample data. And we just type out the function. So await. So const response equals await fetch. Okay, const result equals response dot json okay and that needs an await as well because we don't want that to happen we want that to finish doing its thing before it moves on okay and then we're going to do is do this dot set state Okay, and that's gonna end up having, now we're gonna say our state has gonna, is gonna have a property called data that is going to include our result. And just for good measure, we're gonna console.log results. So we can see that we got the data, save. Well, so that's a function, and then I can just call that function in component did mount this dot get info okay and huzzah what's going to happen is that when the component first loads it'll run this function which runs this function and that's it it just does it once okay that's what component did mount it just does this runs that function once when the component loads every time the component does re-render it'll run a different lifecycle function called component did update and so if you want stuff to happen over and over again you can put it in there um, but that's the thing. Okay, so we hit save. So now, if we take a look back out here, this will load. It, we don't see any errors, so we didn't see any console logs either. So we go take a look at the component. Classy. Let's see here. Oh, I didn't invoke the function. Boop, there we go. That would do it. Oh, those parentheses. Okay, let's wait for it to load. And we should see the API call coming here in a second. And maybe not. So this dot get info did not. So let's try one more thing. Let's do a console log to see if the function even began to run at all. Invoked. Oh, there it is. It, it just it just took a long time. 
invoked and now it's doing the API call and for whatever reason that API call is taking a long time okay okay Yep, and finally finished there it is so see the api call completed and if i go to my components and we see that that information is now in my state data okay just took a really long time for whatever reason asynchronous code okay so that's how you would do that in a class component okay so if i wanted to load up information like you're just grabbing all your data to load on the component you would do that in this component did mount function in a class component how would you do that in a functional component to do that in functional component, there's another hook because lifecycle functions don't exist in functional world. That was another reason you used to have to only use class functions because function components did not have state, they did not have lifecycle. So what you do is you now you have hooks, so you can use this function here called use effect. <coughs> and use effect, um, basically what it does, it takes a function, so you can pass in a function. And this function will run when the component updates. Then you put a second argument, which is a I'll put as an empty array. And when any of the variables in this array updates or changes, it'll then rerun the function. So if you do want the function to run more than once, you can actually say, okay, do run it again when these things change. I'm keeping it empty, which means it just won't rerun. It won't ever run again. So it will only be on component mount. And then I can just do my API call here. Okay, again here you can create a, I will just create a separate function that I can run in there. So const get info equals async. Okay, and then I can just pretty much copy this, the same, same stuff from over here. Okay. I'll call this invoke2 so that we can see it's, it's different. Um, that all the same. The only difference is that here we're going to do set state. We're not setting the state anymore. I need to create a new piece of state. So I'm going to create a new piece of state for the data. Const data set data equals react dot use state. And it'll just initially equal an empty object. <coughs> That's going to be uppercase react. So then this becomes just set data. And data will just equal the result. So we don't need to have this whole object in here. We can just say it just equals whatever the result is. Console.log. And otherwise, that all looks good to me. I just have to invoke it inside the use effect function here. So then this just becomes, um, again, it's, it's a function. So there's no this. So it's just get info. And there you go. So this will load when it updates. So okay, there it goes. So we should see two returns on that API call over time. So let's see if it happened. So see, they both got invoked. So they're both doing these two API calls. And eventually those API calls will finish. But again, I have my buttons that can update state, which is nice. <coughs> So essentially they're the same component, just one done through a function, one done through a class. And see now both API calls finished down here. So now I can go back to my component and my React Dev tools. And I can see Classy has this in their state. I can go to Funky, I can see the hooks, I can see the different state hooks. And I can see there's one that's a hello world, one that's five, and one that has the, the data. Okay, and I can see all the other hooks that are being used in that function. So that is, and again, this, react dev tools piece here in my inspector that's a, that's that's a google chrome extension you have to download that that's that like built into chrome um but yeah i think that's a good start there's other hooks just look at my react playlist to learn about things like the use reducer hook um the uh, use context hook and a bunch of other hooks that have or use ref um which have cool uses but this is sort of the basics to do like 90 percent of what you typically want to do as a starter in react 
So now you know how to do it in functional and class components. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.